Hey, welcome back to Analog Output. Got another module. This is the MCVI, which stands for MIDI to Control Voltage Mark 1. It also is 1106 in Roman numerals. Anyway, this is a module that listens to messages uh, from a MIDI keyboard or other controller or a MIDI interface and produces control voltages and gates to control a, an analog synthesizer with. And it's, uh, you know, like all, most of the modules I've been doing lately, this is in Cosmo format, but there already is a Cosmo format MIDI to control voltage module available. Sam Battle, look mom no computer, uh, designed one and has circuit boards and panels for sale to build one. But I had a couple reasons why I didn't want to go that route. One was it's it's too good. It's too capable. It's capable of giving you pitches and gates for up to six different MIDI channels at the same time, or you can have it just listen to one MIDI channel and give you lots of information on that channel. There are 18 output jacks on the front panel, which is way more than I need, because mostly what I'm using MIDI for these days is, is for plugging in a MIDI keyboard, so I want to play one note at a time on the keyboard and control a monophonic synthesizer. I need to listen to one MIDI channel, get one note at a time, and that's most of what I need. You know, and there's such a thing as designing for, you know, future capability, future expansion, but I don't see myself as needing six MIDI channels or 18 outputs from one MIDI channel anytime soon. So having a 10 centimeter wide Cosmo module, in my case, that I'm only using like a third of the capability of just didn't seem to make that much sense to me. So I decided to come up with my own instead. Uh, when I say my own, really what I did was I took a design that I found online an open source hardware and software design by a guy named Larry McGovern. And there's going to be a link down there to that. And I adopted that. And the software, I made a few changes. I did a little rearranging. I added a few little things here and there. But mostly it's it's pretty much exactly McGovern's software. The hardware, well, the hardware I kind of revised front to back, top to bottom. It's the same basic ideas, but there are some changes. So for instance, he was designing his MIDI to control voltage for a system that evidently is not Eurorack or Cosmo or any standard format. And apparently it's powered by a single 12 volt power supply or at least the MIDI control voltage part of it is. Of course, there's no Eurorack or Cosmo style power header on his design, so I had to add that in, which gives me both plus and minus 12 volts. And since I had the dual power supply, I decided to change the LM358 op amps to TL074. Decided to use a, a different choice for the opto isolator, which is this lovely white chip here decided to add a second TLO74 chip to put some buffering on the gate outputs, which in his design were just connected via a resistor directly to the, the Arduino Nano, which is the brains behind the whole thing. Let's see what else. I added some uh, stabilization capacitors on the gate outputs, and I added an eighth output. His original had seven outputs, and when I went to design the front panel, it, it was pretty clear I had to have, you know, I couldn't put seven outputs in a single column. I had to have two columns. 
if I'm going to have two columns, might as well have an even number of outputs, right? So, so I added an output. So there's lots of changes all over, but fundamentally it's kind of the same thing. Oh, and I added blinky LEDs all over the place so you can see what's going on. Anyway, this thing, as I said, listens to a MIDI device, and in particular it listens on a single MIDI channel. And when it finds note messages on that MIDI channel, note on or note off, it does the corresponding things with these four outputs. There's one where it gives you the control voltage for the pitch, there's the control voltage for the velocity. There's a gate output, which turns on when you press a key and stays on until you release the key. There's a trigger, which turns on when you press a key and then turns off 20 milliseconds later. So it's just a short trigger to tell you when a key press happens. LEDs blink when the gate is going or when the trigger is going. In addition to that, it listens for pitch bend messages. And so there's a pitch bend control voltage output here. It listens for modulation controller messages. And there's an output for that control voltage there. It listens for clock messages. And in MIDI, there's 24 clock messages per quarter note. So whatever the tempo of a quarter note is, 24 times per quarter note, it puts out a clock message. In the software here, it listens for the clock messages, and once every 24 clock messages, it puts out one pulse on this output here. So it puts out one clock pulse per quarter note. And these were the seven outputs that McGovern's design had. The eighth one that I added is another clock output, just because I felt like, well, one clock pulse per quarter note is fine. It's good. It's useful. But it's maybe sometimes not enough. Maybe you need something faster. So I decided to add a second clock output, which is four pulses per quarter note. So once every six MIDI messages, it gives you a pulse there. Switch up here has to do with note priority because this thing puts out information about one note pitch and velocity and gate and so forth about one note. If you press two notes on your MIDI keyboard, then you get two sets of messages and this thing has to decide which note am I going to put out. So the switch up here tells it how to decide that. You can put it in the left position and it will send information about the lowest note that's being pressed on the keyboard. In the right side, it will send information about the highest note being pressed. And in the middle, it'll send information about the most recent note being pressed. So if you're pressing more than one key at a time, this tells it how to select which one to send. There's the back of it. You can see there's two TLO 74 op amp chips. There's these two chips are the digital to analog converter chips. And then this one, as I said before, is the opto isolator for the MIDI input. And then there's the Arduino Nano controlling everything. And that's pretty much it on the main board. There's a second board here that just carries the uh, the jacks and a few associated resistors and the LEDs and you know wired up to the MIDI jack here and the switch up there and that's about it for the hardware. All right so I built the thing. I plugged it in, turned it on and seem to be working. But what you want is for this thing to put out one volt per octave. When you change the MIDI note by one octave, you want this thing to change the output by one volt. And you don't mean like 1.1 volts or 0.9 volts or something. You don't mean 0.99 volts. You mean like you want to have 1.000 volts per octave are not a whole lot different than that. It starts to become audibly out of tune. So the whole thing needs to be calibrated. Because you design the thing to put out 1.000 volts per octave, but that's under the assumption that the resistors you used in the output stage are 
exactly accurate and the voltage reference in the DAC chip is exactly accurate and there's no non-linearities in the DAC response all of which is lies, lies, lies. All those things are going to be a little bit wrong. And so you never really expect to get exactly 1.000 unless you do some fiddling with it to make it happen. So what I did was I connected it up, connected a MIDI keyboard, connected a multimeter on the pitch control voltage output and started playing notes on the MIDI keyboard and started writing down the voltages that I saw on the output and then went and compared those voltages to the voltages that you expect for those keys. And the first time I did this, this is what I saw. So on the horizontal axis here is the MIDI note number in the vertical axis the blue bar there indicates how far off the voltage is from the voltage that you expect. And not so good here. And you can see as you go higher and higher in MIDI note number, the deviation gets larger and larger. That's an indication that you're at maybe 0.995 volts per octave or something instead of 1.000. So then I went into the software and there's a number in the software you can change and if you change that number it changes the slope a little bit. So by adjusting that number I raised it up by half a percent and went back and tried it again and this time this is what I saw. And that looks a lot better. Um, most of the notes here in the middle. This difference in the voltage corresponds to a pitch difference of less than about five cents, where a cent is one one hundredth of a semitone. And five cents is, is, a, is a pretty small inaccuracy in the pitch. It's not something that you're likely to be able to hear very readily. But it gets worse than that at the low end, and it gets worse than that at the top end. But, you know, this is this is at the low end and the top end of an 88 key keyboard. These are notes that you're probably not going to use that often. So it's not so bad if they're a little bit more out of tune. There's also one note kind of in the middle of the mid-range where it's about 10 cents off. And that is a little obnoxious. 10 cents starts to be something you can you can hear and notice as being a note that's out of tune. So then I asked myself, hmm, you know, there's two DAC chips here. What if I switch them around? Maybe the other DAC chip performs better. So I went and pulled out those two chips and I switched them around. Well, that was that was the intention. What I actually did was I pulled out the two DAC chips and on one of them I bent a pin and I straightened out the pin and then I tried to plug it in and the pin bent again. I tried to straighten it out again and plugged it in again and it bent again. And then I finally gave up and pulled out another DAC chip. Anyway, long story short, ended up with a different DAC chip in there and went and repeated the measurement. And lo and behold, everything was way off in the other direction, which meant that the correction that I would applied before was much too big a correction for this other DAC chip. In fact, this other DAC chip needed almost no correction. It needed like uh, a tenth of a percent correction to get results that look like this. And that is pretty nice. Uh, everything in the middle of the graph is down somewhere around maybe three cents or less for the most part. A little bit radier at the top and bottom, but again, not that big a deal. So now it's calibrated, and we should be getting good results. Let's take a listen. All right, I've got uh, the MCVI module here, and it's feeding into the world's most basic analog synthesizer patch, pitch control voltage, going into a voltage-controlled oscillator, from there to a filter, 
down there to a voltage controlled amplifier control voltage on the voltage controlled amplifier is coming from this thing here which is an envelope generator which is taking the gate from the MIDI to control voltage and output from the BCA is what you hear. So let's take a closer look at the module so you can see what there is to see. Okay, so here's my MIDI keyboard and I press a key and you see some things happening. You see the red light blinking which means there's a MIDI message and then you see the trigger light blinking and the gate light turning on when I press the key and turning off when I release the key. So that's saying it's processing these note on and note off events. And indeed, it's doing what you expect it to do. We can do some fun things like uh, run the sequencer. And you can see when the sequencer is running, we're also getting the uh, clock events happening. So we're getting one of these per quarter note and four of these per quarter note. arpeggios okay now let's try plugging pitch bend into the oscillator and see what happens then so the pitch bend control works. How about the modulation? There you go. If you want to build one of these things or build a modified version of one of these things, my GitHub repository with the schematics and the PCB layouts and documentation and so forth and so on, right down there in the comments. Uh, so follow that link and have fun. MCVI, MIDI to control voltage Mark 1. Mark 1 because, like I said, I didn't need as much capability as the LMNC module has, but I might want a little bit more capability than this one has, so I'm starting to accumulate ideas already for 1107 MCVII. Not any time real soon, but it's something to think about for the future. Anyway, speaking of the future, there will be more videos coming up here, so please like, subscribe, and stay tuned. I hope to have some good stuff for you pretty soon now, and I'll see you next time on Analog Output.